Mr. President, you are more than welcome here this morning. The, this is an informal meeting of the Republican Conference. A quorum is present. I think uh, Senator Garn, the Secretary of the Conference, uh, has informed me. Is that correct, Senator? Well, I'll tell a quorum is present, and before I turn the meeting over to our distinguished majority leader for the introduction, I might note that the Senate opened with prayer this morning. It won't be necessary to open this meeting with prayer. Uh, recognize Senator Baker. Mr. President, welcome to the Senate side of the Capitol, the Republican Caucus, and this the old Senate chamber. This is an historic place. It's where the great debates took place prior to the war between the states. And because of the bad acoustics in here, you can tell why we had to go to war. <laughs> Nobody could understand what was being said by Webster and Calhoun and the like. But we, Mr. President, understand what you say, and you lead us with, lead us with great dignity and style and grace and resourcefulness. We're here today, Mr. President, at your request to discuss a matter of upcoming great importance, and that is the package that has been arrived at as the down payment on the reduction in the budget deficit. I take this opportunity once more to thank you for your devotion, your time and effort and dedication in trying to negotiate this package. There were many meetings covering many hours. There was a spirited give and take by those involved and by you. I think you conducted those negotiations in the very best traditions of this Republic and of the Presidency. Mr. President, we're proud to be with you, and we be, will be proud to fight with you in this session of the Congress to formulate the policies that will best serve this nation. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my high honor and privilege and pleasure to present to you the President of the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I have to explain something, confess to something here that I came around and to the wrong side here where I was supposed to sit and was directed over to this side, but coming in this short aisle, I realized that if I came directly this way, I had to turn left. <laughs> so I did it backward. But uh, I've come here and asked for permission to talk to you this morning, and I appreciate this opportunity. On the so-called down payment uh, that we have come together on, some of your colleagues and, and ourselves, and the importance of it. As you know, in the State of the Union address, I had asked for the possibility of a bipartisan group from both houses of the Congress that we could get together and without polarizing or making it an election issue that we could come to an agreement on a down payment. Called a down payment because we realize that there is nothing that we can do right now and in this short span to completely resolve the ongoing deficit problem. But that doesn't mean there aren't things that we can do over the long range looking to a date possible when we will have a balanced budget. And that's why I continue to hope that we can convince everyone of the need for a constitutional amendment which will make a balanced budget mandatory. It seemed that we couldn't get the cooperation we sought in trying to come to that bipartisan position. So with your leadership, Howard Baker and Ted Stevens and John Tower and Pete Domenici and Bob Dole, Mark Hatfield, Jake Garn and Paul Laxalt, we did, in a series of meetings, move to and come to agreement on this plan which would call for $43 billion over a three-year period in savings and the domestic side of the budget, $57 billion in budget authority in the defense budget, and $48 billion in increased revenues, but without a tax increase as to rates. We believe that there are um, loopholes, there are 
provisions in the tax law that in some instances, uh, uh, let's say, are unfair uh, generally, or some can take advantage, unintended advantage of them. And in looking at these, we believe that this sum of money uh, was possible. Now, we know that there are others, uh, your colleagues on the other side of the aisle, who uh, want or profess to want a reduction of the deficit, but they would put the major emphasis on defense and increasing taxes and increasing tax rates. We believe that this is a good package. Let me just say that uh, I, have to, I have to say that I believe the cuts that we're proposing in defense will mean a slowdown in what we're trying to accomplish. But I don't believe it's unacceptable that it isn't enough that to overcome the need for us to deal with this deficit problem. Now, I know that we're hearing all sorts of things about the deficit, and it's, I think it's wonderful that suddenly, after all these 40-odd years in which uh, the, our opponents had the majority in both houses of the Congress, and during which time we virtually without exception had deficits, literally as a matter of policy, that they have now decided that we should share and that the deficits are ours. Well, we don't want them. So what we're going to try to do is, is get rid of them. I think that as an issue, it's going to be rather difficult for those who have, as I say, participated deliberately in a policy of deficit spending that accounted for virtually a trillion dollars in national debt before we got here, uh, to now turn around and say to those of us who have been asking for reductions in spending in these last three years and have only gotten about half of what we asked for, to now say that uh, we are responsible for these when at the same time we are the ones who are asking for a balanced budget amendment and they are the ones who are resisting that. But I do hope that we can be bipartisan to the extent that there will be well-meaning legislators on the other side of the aisle who see the necessity for getting this down payment. And then, as I indicated a moment ago, that there is further distance to go, then I believe that we must seriously study the structural changes that have to be made in government in order to come to that day of balanced budget. About half of the deficit, this vastly increased deficit, came about because of the added dip in the recession that took place in July of 1981, 10.8% unemployment and so forth. The other half was structural. Now, the half that was due to the deficit is going away. It's going away because I have been hearing from some very noted economists who have contacted me on their own to tell me I should stop calling it an economic recovery. They said, we have passed the recovery stage. We are now in economic expansion. And some of the figures uh, certainly bear that out. The most recent one, the flash estimate, 7.2% for this quarter of growth in the, in the gross national product. What has been happening with unemployment? I just received some figures yesterday. The automobile industry, which was in such dire straits uh, uh, when we came here in 1981, has added some 83,000 more employees working today in the automobile industry than were working in 1981 in that industry when we came here. Their rate in the industry now of unemployment is 5.9 percent, which is well below the 7.1 percent national average. But there are figures, all of these things, the retail sales, the personal income, the housing starts, everything indicates this recovery that we're having. So that part, that half of the deficit is being taken care of. It is up to us now to face up to the structural built-in causes of deficit and look toward a long-term change in that structure to where we can have government under control. Now, I know everyone will run and say, stop the presses. And I have a story that will crack this town wide open or something if I say what I'm going to say, and I will. And that is, I've dug in my heels on taxes. I want you to know that if, first of all, on this third part of the 
down payment, the $150 billion down payment, the $48 billion in added revenue. If an effort is made and is successful enough to reach my desk that attempts, first of all, to get that without keeping the promise for the spending cuts, I will veto. I will veto also if there is an effort made to increase rates. But I will say at the same time, if when we have finally brought government down to the percentage of the gross national product that government is taking, and we believe ourselves and can honestly say this is the minimum, this is where, this is as far as we can go, and this is the, now the cost of government if we're to do the things that are required of us. And if that figure then is still above the percentage of gross national product we are taking in revenues, then I would be the first one to say we would have to adjust to meet this standard of government. I happen to believe that, that there's a good chance that will not be necessary if we do what we should do with regard to shrinking the, the cost of government. So I'm, I think I've covered the point here except that I believe, in this year particularly, it is absolutely essential that we appear as the group of us, that your leadership and ourselves, that we appear united in our determination to get this package and stand together. And I think it will benefit all of us very much in every way. It will not only be good government, it will be good politics. So uh, I know that we're going to have a chance to visit a little bit, so I'll sit down. I've said enough. Thank you, Mr. President. We'll have a brief intermission while the press leaves the room. And